Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where we will deliver you tips and techniques to advance yourself in anything you decide to do. I'm your host, author, speaker, and book enthusiast, Dom Brightman, and every Thursday I will interview authors, especially self-published ones, from various walks of life, who will deliver you some inspiration and information to advance yourself. Be sure to check out my book called Going North on Amazon.com, available in both ebook and paperback. Audiobook coming soon to more ears near you. And let's get on with the show. Our next guest on the Going North podcast, we have a speaker, success coach, and author of six books. Not one, but six books. And he is the Reverend Dr. Sinclair Gray the Third. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for having me on this beautiful day. How's everything with you? Everything's doing well going north. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yes, sir. So, I looked up your bio, and you have a lot, a lot of experience being a native of the D.C. metropolitan area and being the author of six books. And I have to admit, I did purchase purchase your most recent copy of the ABCs of Making Business Networking Work for You, and that read is great because it reminded me of so many things. So, how? how Thank you, you, sir. I appreciate it. Oh, my my pleasure. So, I. How, how did it come to this? How, how did you become who you are today? Just tell us a bit about Dr. Sinclair Gray the Third and how he became who he is today. Wow. Well, well, well definitely. I guess I have to give all praise to God. You know, definitely because it's yeah, something I really uh, expected or even anticipated. Uh, it was kind of a different shift. But um, I guess pretty much just understanding the whole concept of just writing. And I tell people, I never went to school for writing. Um, in fact, I did not like to write. <laughs> and when I first started my church in 2004, back in the uh, Mount Rainier, Maryland area, I had one of my members to ask me to just write an inspirational message. Because, uh, you know, we had a church service on Sunday, and we had a Bible study on Thursday. So she said, uh, Rev, why don't you just write an inspirational message? I said, okay, what the heck? I wrote it. Person liked it. Why don't you write another one? <laughs> liked it. And it was birthed from that point on. So one of my members said, well, let's go ahead and develop a Yahoo group. And I said, look, you take care of it. And this was, this happened back in, I want to say October of 2004. Wow. And it just pretty much took a life of its own. And then I started writing five days a week, five, you know, five days a week. Off, you know, taking time off on the weekends, and then now I'm taking, you know, writing on the weekends. So that's pretty much how this writing kind of started, you know, going from the Yahoo groups, doing constant contact, and then having people just follow me. Um, the business book, so once again, I thank you so much for, for your support. The business book was the culmination of, of just a lot of experience in the business world, I said, living in the Maryland area, then transitioning down to the uh, Georgia area, just going to a lot of networking events and people not knowing what to do. Uh, so a lot of people know what to do, but a whole lot more people know what not to do mm-hmm. when it comes to going to networking events. And my father always taught me, it's not so much what you know, but who you know that will open up doors for you. Right. So going to networking events, coming down to Georgia, really knowing no one other than a few family members. I had to go to networking events, you know, and, you know, I have to eat, I have to, I have, to I have my business, so people, so as many times I went to networking events, I would get business cards, try to follow, people wouldn't call, people wouldn't follow up themselves. So oh. I thought, about, you know what, people need to know how to network. You know, everybody goes to networking events so many times, but I, I've done so many networking events, you know, it's a shame. And <laughs> I would get frustrated. <laughs> You know, I get all these business cards, and I don't want to do business with some of the people. And many people are looking for a sale, but no one's looking to build relationships. 
So that's how I came up with the book, the ABCs. I wanted to make something that was an easy read, something that would be uh, impactful and beneficial for entrepreneurs and anyone in sales. Pretty much, it's just in business. To understand how do you network. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's pretty much how I came up with it. Yeah, and I'm glad you did, and I'm glad the book is very easy to read and is broken down into multiple segments of chapters, which is about a, about a page each, really. Because it's exactly, exactly. I wanted, I wanted to see something really simple, and um, that's why I put I listed 26 ways. <laughs> <laughs> 26 ways from A to Z. Um, of course, there's other ways, but once again. You know, we're, we're living in a world today whereby people's attention span is very short. They, 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 they want to hear something and they want to get the information quick, fast, and in a hurry. So if I can do that for you, make it easy, make it impact, make it something that you can apply, then I've done my job. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I believe you've really done your job thoroughly because at the end of the day, not everybody's going to be the end-all, be-all, because there's so much content and information out there. There's really no <laughs> human being that can be the end-all, be-all. Exactly. 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 So, yeah, I'm definitely excited about that. And, you know, in the future, you know, maybe write more uh, more books, but just taking my time with that. <laughs> I want to pay for myself. Because <laughs> I like that. I, I do write. I do I write every day. I edit articles every day, so I have to give my brain a little time to relax. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that, but you're still going at a great pace, though, because some folks may have written books and they still don't write every day. Exactly. It, it, it can it can be it can be taxing, but just like anything else, you have to know how to balance yourself. Um, the things I try to do is just you know give myself a little breaks throughout the day. I edit. Up to eight articles a day. Uh, in addition to editing, editing eight articles, I may write maybe from three to five articles a day. In addition, uh, which are not just from the spirit side, but from the political, social justice side, and just, and just news work. So that can be um, that can be taxing. I'm trying to stretch myself and, and force myself to do up to about uh, three to five a day. Sometimes I may do two. But I'm, I'm set the goal to do it from three to five every day and taking time off on Sunday. <laughs> oh, there you go. Give yourself the Sabbath off, right? <laughs> or give yourself the exactly. Sabbath. Exactly. You have to. You have to. And then you have to know what you want to write about. And you have to, you, once you get into that zone, you know, when I get into my zone, I try to hurry up and just write it. And then I go back and do the editing. But I try not to spend a lot of time on the writing when I write articles for different publications. I try to spend anywhere, either I've been doing it for so long, I try to do anywhere from about 20 to 25 minutes per article. Mm. I don't want to spend hours because I have other things I have to do. And if I don't get those things done, then, you know, I can't, I can't be successful in other business operations. That's true, because you have to try to find a way to give the appropriate attention to each thing that you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. Can't be on one thing. You know, one of the things we talk about is having multiple streams of income. So, you know, between that, you know, looking for speaking engagement, uh, getting plans for my success, my success coaching business, making, to go to networking, events, making time to follow up. Those are some of the things that we always have to keep in mind, try to have that, have that balance. And then no one to shut everything down. Everything off. One of the things that I made a conscious effort to do, nine o'clock, yeah, Monday, you know, every day, I cut my phone off. I don't accept phone calls. I don't do text messaging. I really don't do emails <laughs> unless it's maybe from one or two people, but I accept, I accept nothing. Nine p.m. is when I shut it down. If I choose the right article, that's fine for me. Um, but as far as Dealing with people on the outside, uh, I shut it down at nine p.m. and I have to because I have to value my time. Because if I don't value my time, I will find you know just like anything else, you'll find yourself being burnt out um, and just losing because everybody wants to 
everybody wants your time. And unless you put a boundary on it, and unless you tell people, you know what, I don't cross this time, they they will continue to take advantage of your time. I believe that thoroughly. <laughs> I believe it thoroughly. Yeah. <laughs> especially the, especially some folks out there who may not be used to networking and they just ramble on and on. <laughs> and then. Oh, I, oh, oh, I agree. I yeah. agree. I mean, you know, we can go to a lot of networking events and you'll find people talk your head off. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, when you read in my book, you know, you got to learn when to cut that off because that one person would talk your head off. They will prevent you from networking with other people. And if they prevent you from networking with other people, you don't get paid. <laughs> you cannot make a, a, a you cannot make a great business relationship. So I tried, you know, you know, I, I'll give you a little interest depending on what we're talking about. But I have to say, you know what? Let me go ahead and be some other people because I think it's best for us to go ahead and expand our horizons. You know, and I said, look, let's continue, let's continue this conversation over coffee. But not right now. But not right now. Yeah, that 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 can be a a turn off. Yeah, it can be a huge turn off. So you mentioned before that it, over these past twelve years, you've written six books, which is great because a lot of folks wish they would at least publish one book. <laughs> okay. And what what trials did you have to overcome? I would say just fear. Fear and just having people, two or three people who were close to me, not don't want to mention any names, two or three people who were close to me, uh, that told me that, you know, it's no need to write. Hmm. People are getting your messages every day. So why put some of your messages in a book? Why would somebody buy a book from you when they can just log on to your, uh, your website or, or ask to be, uh, part of your email inspiration group and just get messages? So, Fear, not knowing what to do, I would say that was a small obstacle. I had a few friends who I thought were friends, who were close to me, really telling me what not to do, that it couldn't be done. And that was, that, 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 that hurt me more than anything else. But, you know, oh, and that's why they're no longer friends anymore. They're ex-friends or former friends. Um, I thank them for their, Hatred, because their hatred allows me to write six books. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what they're doing with their life. I pray and wish them well. But just like anything else, you just have to just move on from people who are trying to unfind you and define you. Mm-hmm. So um, then once I got past that, like, and then the fear, the fear of writing, the fear of not knowing what to do. And... Once again, just having some of the great people around me who can kind of steer me in the right direction. And look, I have a manuscript. This is what I want to do. And of course, you know, you make some trials and errors in book publishing and, and printing and graphic design. Spend a little bit too much money on one area and not understand that it doesn't happen. But biggest, the biggest option I would say was just having certain people around me who I thought had my back to just really tell me now. To really say, you know what? Wow, I'm not going to support this. Once again, you know, I have to thank them, but we're no longer friends. <laughs> right. And cool. It wasn't me. It was like, no problem. Thank you very much. You do you. I'm gonna do me. Like I wish them well. I, I don't see anyone any harm. But thank you very much. I don't need you in my life. Because eventually, we know what happens. They will come back. And matter of fact, one of the is from one of the persons who besides my book purchased two of my uh inspirational books and helped that person out. Nice. So it happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean it happens with the journey of life. I mean you gotta travel life, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Sometimes you got roles that you had no idea that you were going to go down. <laughs> and you know, and, and, I, and I think that happens with, with, with uh, just about it, just about most people. We try to have this certain blueprint. We want to do A, B, and C, but then we get a shift, uh, a divine shift, or or a life happening shift, and then we have to make up our minds how are we going to do this. 
And, and so many people, uh, they, they keep saying to themselves, you know, they, I gotta have a degree to do this. I don't have any experience. And some things, yes, you, you can't be a doctor without going to school. Wow. Right. You can't perform, you can't go into a courtroom without having a law degree and knowing certain types of law. But then I think oftentimes we, we put too much pressure on ourselves without just stepping out of faith and trusting in God. Cause unless we trust, unless we trust in, in the higher power, we trust in God, we, we, we trust in our own ability. So you know what? I've been given this gift, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. You have nothing to lose. All you can do is just win. Oftentimes we, we tell people, you know, who I coach that we are oftentimes our biggest enemy. We are, we are our biggest critic. And sometimes we are the ones that put up a wall because of fear, because of doubt, because of uncertainty. But we have once through that, then we can start getting a little bit of momentum. We can start seeing uh, how we are able to manifest that which is in us for everyone around us to, to, to embrace, to experience, to take advantage of. Very true. Very true. Got to take advantage. Exactly. So, so what advice would you give to someone who wants to be an author and a success coach? Okay. Wow. Well, let's start with the author. The author is start writing. Take, get, 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 get out of your head. Uh, start writing. Uh, you know, I can't, I'm not going to promote. I, I do a class down here on how to write and self-publish a book. But you have to realize that, and this this could be hard for a lot of people about trying to hear, not everybody wants to read your book. Your book is not going to be for everybody. I think you really have to know who, who your book is for. You have to ask yourself, why do I want to write this book? What am I writing this book for? What am I hoping to get out of this book? Because many self-published authors are not millionaires. So I think you have to start writing. You have to um, just really go for it and realize, you know, what, what are you trying to tell somebody? I hear so many people who talk about this story. Wow, I want to tell them how I overcame A, B, and C. And the first question I say, okay, great, that's nice. But everybody pretty much has that same story. What, what is going to be so unique about your story? And then they start getting a little bit more personal. I've heard 20 of those stories in about a month. Just continue to write and real and want to get out there and let people realize, help people understand. Everybody is not going to read your book. Stop trying to be on Oprah. Stop trying to be on Tyler Perry. <laughs> if it happens, that's great. But you have to write your book in such a way that it's going to make sense. Um, my six books out. That the last book, the ABCs, that that's for a very specific group. That that that's not a that's not a book I'm going into in churches with. It's okay, you know, this is a book on salvation. Everybody needs to buy my book. That's not my audience. I'll bring my other Christian books there. But I think you know, even though some people in the church can use that book, but you have to know who you're writing it for. At the end of the day, what is someone who reads my book? What are they going to get out of the book? Now, when it comes to a success coach, oh gosh, you have to have, you have to have some type of training, you have to have some type of experience. I'm what is called a certified NTU psychotherapist. So I just tell people, I'm a coach. A certified NTU, NTU psychotherapist, I work, I got that, uh, when I worked in uh, Washington DC, work with at risk kids, um, broken families, and trying to restore individuals, children, as well as their parents back into the broken family, into their family, into the community, professionally and personally. So I have experience in that. So everybody wants to be a life coach. Yes, you have to probably just, you probably need some training with that. You probably have to get some education. But once again, what, if you get all of those things, then you need to understand how to market your business, how to make your business credible. And it's just, and, and you know, and I have to say this, so don't know all of the artists, but it has to, you can't say the Lord delivered me from an abusive situation so I'm going to become a life coach. You just can't do that. <laughs> because what is your life? I mean, what, what experiences do you have? Are you, are you qualified? Are you capable of dealing with everyone and their issues? And then you have to know when to refer. Mm. 
I cannot deal with every client. I don't want to deal with everybody. So I've <laughs> learned how to work out. I've learned how to deal with referral systems. So whenever I meet somebody who, who wants my services, I send them an evaluation. I, I talk with them. And based upon maybe about 15, 20 minute discussion, based upon the evaluation, I ask myself, okay, can I do this? If I can do it, great, let's sign up. If I can't do it, well, you know what? This is probably just a little bit too much for me right now. I can go ahead and refer you and recommend you to other people who are probably more qualified than me. And I think people have to do that because the worst thing that we can do as a success coach, as a life coach, is to get into something that you have no experience in. It's to get into something that you just have complete doubts for. And, 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 and that, and that's the biggest thing. Many people think it's easy. Oh, I'm going to become a life coach or a success coach or business coach because it's easy. I can charge people uh, so much per, per month. Okay. That's great. But are you getting results? If you're not getting any type of results, if it's not measurable, then your job is ineffective. Now, uh, also, are you qualified? Another story. Uh, three. Can you handle it? Because if you're dealing with everybody's issues, who's going to deal with your issues? Mm, true. I, 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 yes, I'm a success coach, but guess what? I have, I have a best friend, and I have maybe one or two other I can throw ideas off of. So they're, in essence, they're my coaches, my friends, that keep, that, that keeps me grounded. You know, I don't call them a coach, but they keep grounded. I can bounce ideas off of them. And they say, you know what, Chris? That's not good. That, 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 that sounds horrible. Or it's a great idea. And they challenge me. So I have some people, I, I, have, I have people around me who challenge me. Um, you know, I know something the other day that you can't have everybody around you. Everybody can't be your friend. Everybody can't be your running buddy because people will tend to draw, draw from you rather than pour in cheap. So, and, you know, here's something that people got to understand. When you decide to become a life coach or a success coach or any type of coach, you are pouring into somebody's life. You're constantly pouring. Well, if you're pouring into somebody's life on a consistent basis, who's pouring back into you? Who, who is stretching you? And I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, I want to be very clear. I'm not speaking negative of anyone who, of the clients, because I, you know, I love my clients, and we should all love our clients. But we're pouring into them so much that at the end of the day, somebody has to ask the question, who's going to pour into me? Who is going to pour into me? So I think that's one of the things that success coaches, life coaches, or any type of coach ought to have in their life is one, just maybe two or three people that constantly pour into their life. And, you know, I, I tell you, I've been, I've been, uh, and fortunate to have people that pour into my life on a daily basis, a daily basis, they keep me sharp. Because without them, I can't do what I do. You, you brought up some great valid points, especially about the credibility piece. Because a lot of folks out, out there today with the Internet, there's like so many tools that folks can acquire and try to smash and grab and try to do everything at once and then, just take a exactly. bunch of photos and do all this other stuff and act like they've done something, but they probably haven't really done anything. <laughs> exactly. And it will show. It will show quickly. You know, somebody who needs help, someone who's going to ask you a certain question, it will show. And you can't fake it. You can't fake it, nor should you fake it. If you can't invest in yourself, why should somebody invest in your company? It's very true. So speaking of investing in yourself, what books have really inspired you just to just keep going? What 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 would you say your favorite books that have inspired you and you recommend to others? Okay, well, you know, as a preacher, I'm going to always say the Bible. Uh, I think the Bible has great tools, not only from uh, a sense that you hear from the Word of God, but you're understanding how to relate to people, you're understanding how to build relationships. Uh, you understand your morals. I think also one one of a couple couple great books. Um, there 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 are so many books. Uh, books I think by Dr. Claude Anderson, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, um, 
I would say one of the things that has really struck me, uh, that, that really hit me pretty hard is a book called, uh, Business for Black Men, Dr. Naeem Akbar. Uh, Not sure if he is still, uh, who, who's a professor at Florida State, a very powerful book. And not to really just describe this whole book. One of the aspects, well, one of the things he wrote a book about when a person becomes a man, uh, he goes through three stages, goes through the male, the boy, and the uh, man stage. He says, when you become a man, then you have a vision. It's your, I believe it's says your mentality uh, along with your personality that will uh, help you reach your destiny. So I, that, that really hit me really hard. Because without a vision, of course, we know that people perish. But I think uh, one of the things that we always talk about, vision, where do you want to see yourself uh, five years from now? Where do you want to see yourself 15 years from now? What type of legacy do you want to leave for your family? Uh, one of the things I, I, was, I was taught years ago is when you go to the cemetery, you are concerned with, the person's name, you're concerned with when they're born and when they die, the year that they die. But what many people don't really consider is that little dash that's in the middle between the date of birth and the year of their transition. Uh, Gentleman told me it is the dash, it's the sum total of your life that you will be remembered by and remembered for. So that's what that's that's what drives me is to really work on my dash. So I'm all, I'm always trying to read paper, you know, newspapers, um, magazines, success magazine, and a little web. Uh, because it gives you practical tools on how to balance life, how to clients, how to work on your sales pitch. So anything I can find that's almost inspirational, I'm, I'm always reading. And of course, I'm always, I'm getting the best that I can to stay up on the news. Um, I right. just, uh, political, or social, and cultural. We live, we're, we're living in a world today whereby we just cannot be confined to one book. And, I mean, you know, and I was speaking to my wife about it this morning. We have so many people in the church that don't want to associate with, with negative news, don't want to associate with anything outside of the church or anything outside of the Bible. If, if, if that, if that's your, if that's your mentality, God bless you, but you will become one-sided. You will become born and you will become, uh, effective because the world is not positive all the time. It's true. It's our job as individuals to, uh, to be the light of the world. I have to know when to confront evil. I have to know when to confront injustice. I have to know when to confront anything that is wrong that I think is more than wrong, that I think that goes against my values, that goes against community development. I'm a business owner, so I need to find out what, who's coming into my neighborhood. I need to find out what businesses are are, are, are good, what businesses are bad. <laughs> and I think that, that's common that, that, that sense. And then you sit back and you learn from these businesses. You learn from these owners. So you just have, you just have to read. Read and ask questions, and just and just and just, and just be a, a a source. Try to be a source for people. That's one of the things I try to do. Uh, Systems try to be a source. People come to me for advice. I give them advice, but if they need uh, people in business or or in the legal field, whatever it is, I want to be a source. So you know, contact this person. Just mention my name. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very big on trying to keep my to the board. And, and that's not to say that, you know, I think that I'm all that, but I want to be able to do business in an ethical way, uh, whereby I don't have to make long introductions. Mm-hmm. If I tell someone, call this person, just mention my name, that my reputation, my business, and because we're speaking in the business, my brand will speak for itself. And I think that that's how we are to be. That's how we are to be. I love it. I love it. That that that's a worthy goal right there, just to be a source for others. Exactly. That's that's my goal. So, what music inspires you to get up and start your day? What music? Oh gosh. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I don't listen to music in the morning. 
I don't. I have a, I have a routine uh, with my wife. We get up in the morning, we talk, we have coffee. <laughs> there you go. And that's that's how we that's how you know you know that that's that's our day. We you know we talk about you know what's happening in the world. That's our time to get to know each other a little bit more. Every morning when she's in town, first thing we do, you know, we, we sit down, we have coffee, and we talk. We shut the world out. We're not listening to music. Uh, we won't listen to any news. 15, 30 minutes. That's our time. <laughs> I know that's, 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 that's crazy. Then, and then afterwards, I, I, after we've done everything, then I don't flip on any music. I flip on the news. I flip on community news. Uh, talk radio. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of talk radio. Um, I think you know, because you are in the Washington, D.C. area, um, I flip on, you know, through my um, tune in, I flip on WPSW. Hmm. So I, I, I'll, I'll listen to that, or I'll listen to one of the news talk radios down in the land. But I'm riding, I'm riding to the news. I want to find out what's happening. I want to, you know, I want to be able to pick on, pick people's brains and, and how they're thinking about different topics of the world. So I, I know I'm sounding, that's, that's probably kind of crazy. I don't do music anymore. <laughs> I used to. Um, some of the music I should listen to, listen to gospel. Um, but I'm, I'm really big in the talk radio. Yeah, I'm big in the talk radio. I've had my mind stimulated. Hey, that is a okay. That's actually even better than what some, some folks do because it's like some folks just get up, press the snooze button and then keep going it, and then they end up like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 No, I, you know, and like I said, you know, to me the news is not stressful, but I have to, I have to get my mind ready for the day. You know, my mind has to be going because it will eventually shut down. You know, when I relax, when I relax in the evening, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not reading anything. I'm just, I'm just relaxed. But I have to have my mind sharp in the morning. It has to be sharp. Once again, it begins in the morning. Just talking, talking with my wife. Um, you know, we may have gotten up early in the morning. Probably read something, but you no, know, we talk about life. You know, whether whether it's politics, whether it's being in the Bible, whether it's something social, whether it's something just about each other. That's how we start our day, and that's something that 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 very sincere. That that's a sacred moment. <laughs> and that is great too, because it's always great to have a sacred moment, especially with your your spouse or significant other. So that way. You both have that time with each other right? to keep keep just the flame. Going. Exactly. Exactly. You know, like I said, you know, that can start, you know, because you know she flies a lot more than than I do. Um. So I mean, it, it, it varies. Uh, so if she's out of the country. She calls me in the morning. We talk. Um. Where we're we're flying together, uh, probably going to the same location, different location. We'll get to work. We'll get early. Get to the air, get to the airport probably an extra hour, hour and a half early. We'll sit down and talk. That's our time. <laughs> if we don't do it here, we'll do it at the airport. So yeah, so we have we have our special time. There you go. Got to take notes on that one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and it makes it so much easier. I mean, try. You know, it it, it makes it makes it so much easier because. You know, I'm sure, you know, that's a whole other show. Communication, everybody has it. You know, there, there's no second guessing. There's no wondering. There's just open dialogue. You know, I tell people, my wife, she's my best friend. So I can talk to her about anything. And I have talked to her about anything. And vice versa. And one of the things that we, we've we even, you know, we told each other before we even got married, there's no judgment. No judgment. You know, tell me. And I won't judge you. And that right there makes it makes a huge difference. And I can confide in the woman that I love and I care about, and I don't have to worry about her judging me. And I know that she wants my she has my back. That's right. We don't have to worry about any gavels made out of mace or whatever. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. And, and here's, here's the here's the thing. I don't have to worry about going on social media because it won't go on social media. There you go. That shows you got your head you know, on the street. What we, <laughs> exactly. What we talk about stays between us. 
All righty. Last question. Okay. What advice would you give to yourself if you were a millennial in the year 2017? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> we talked about that. Okay. What advice would I give myself about a millennial? I would say, can, can I give more than one advice? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I, I, I would say, learn how to communicate with people outside of technology. Right. You have, in other words, build a relationship whereby you are actually picking up the phone or you meet someone and you're talking face to face. Stop all the text messaging. Uh, I don't know about you, my friend, but it bothers me when I go to a restaurant to eat and I see young folks sitting across from one another and they got their heads buried in their phone. Oh, man. Put the phone down. Learn how to communicate. That, that's, that's my biggest advice. Use technology as important. But do not forget the value of human one-to-one interaction. Uh, number two, I would say uh, for, for, for millennials, try to engage the advice of your elders. Elders, they, they, they know so much, and they can pass down information that could be life-changing, life-transforming life uh, three, don't always be in the big rush. <laughs> learn to sit back and enjoy. Learn to sit back and enjoy life for a moment. So the reality will teach you. Life moves on. Life will move on with you and without you. So you have to learn to sit back, take a deep breath, and calm your nerves. Sometimes you have to put the phone down. You know, learn to interact and socialize with people. You know, going back to number one, first, learn to interact and socialize with people outside of Facebook, uh, Twitter, of course, LinkedIn, uh, Snapchat, all these other social media. Learn to sit down and have a cup of coffee with somebody and put your phone down. Look at someone in their eye. Learn to understand who you are and why you are and why you're here. So I think that's the and, and, and go back to reading. I think one of the things that we saw from a lot of millennials, millennials today, uh, they look at pictures so much. I think with Instagram, a lot of people post pictures on Instagram so much. Well, by if you read a long article, their attention span is so short. Learn, go back to reading. Go back to critical thinking. Mm-hmm. Ask questions. Everything is not in the photo. I can really care less about looking at photos. I want to know what's in your head. If I see a photo, now I got to start trying to analyze and try to break down, you know, how you're looking, you know, are you looking a certain way? That's too much on me. I want to know what's in your head. Because <laughs> what's in your head will tell me what's in your heart. There you go. All right. So, so for the folks at home, how do we get in contact with you? How, how are we keeping? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Well, if anybody wants to get in contact, you can go to my website, which is Sinclair Gray, that's S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R-G-R-E-Y dot org. With that, you can tell us your contact information, contact us through there. You can also email me at Dr. Gray, that's D-R-G-R-E-Y at Gray dot org. You can follow me on Twitter at Dr. Sinclair Gray, or feel free to pick up a phone and call me. I'm, you know, it's always easier at 678 678- Five one six zero seven seven nine. Feel free to call me anytime from eight in the morning to nine at night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make sure it's eight fifty five. Don't call at nine at the dock because that that phone probably gonna be off. <laughs> exactly, the, the, the phone will be off. It will go to voicemail. Um, it can't be that important. And and, and I tell I tell you, some people even if you text me, I probably won't return the call. Only, you know, all the time the phone is on late at night is when my wife goes out of the car. <laughs> and I have to have the phone, and I keep the phone on to hear from her. When she's in town, phone's off at night because, number one, you know, I have to have a balance with myself. You know, and then, two, if you really need to talk to me, you can call me earlier throughout the day. <laughs> there you go. And be sure to pick up one or three of his books. He has six of them. I thoroughly enjoyed the ABCs of making business networking for you, and I'm about to get started. Thank you once again. 
Yes, and I'm also going to get started on God Held Back Your Night So You Can Get It Right. Thank you so much. That's one of my favorite books. <laughs> yeah, because I love that title. Oh, oh, real quick, let me put a, let me put a plug in for that. Go on um, I love that book. Uh, for those in the D.C. area, I wrote that book, Hanging in Adams Morgan. At a few coffee shops in the Adams Morgan area. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that 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 kind of I love that part, that book. That's one of my favorite books. I'm looking forward to reading it even more now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You dropped a ton of content on us that we can act on, especially <laughs> with making sure we're credible and. Also being a referral system to others when you yourself are not fully capable to handle a client or not, because it's better that way. It's better for all parties. Exactly. I agree totally. Thanks a bunch for your tuning ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Be sure to, once again, check out my book, Going North, on Amazon.com and CreateSpace.com. And if you'd like, feel free to follow me on social media at Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Dom Brightman, YouTube at Dom Brightman. And if you want to connect on LinkedIn as well, I am there at Dom Brightman as well. Go out there and make the